Hello and welcome to Fragedamu. Over the weekend, nearly 10,000 young people came together in the capital for a festival as part of what is dubbed Kafita, a project meant to help empower this section of society. But what are the hopes of the young in this country? And how best could they be realized? I'm joined by Lenny Kafle, a software developer, and Dagim Shemalus, a trained midwife. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you yeah. very much. So, there are what, how many? Over 10,000 young people, including you two, for that grand get together at the Millennium Hall this over the weekend, correct? Um, yeah, a lot of young people all around the regional cities and two federal cities moved um, here for two days, the two days festival. Um, they came in by Friday and stayed for four days in general, including the two festival days. So yeah, it was a large crowd. Oh yeah. It's all about connecting, right? Exactly. Largely connecting, right? Large crowd, which was really inclusive from really different backgrounds. Like a lot, like different, like including the 17 cities that Kafta project is settled at, and there was a lot of get, get togethers. The Kafta project is all about what? Uh, uh, providing the opportunity for the young in Ethiopia to be able to think, to be able to get into doing something and uh, contributing to the well-being of society and pushing this country forward? Is that is that a fair assessment of what exactly. the Kafuta that's the project exact is? Like the Kafuta project need wants like, the users to be the gear changer of their life. Like They need to be the ones that are changing their own lives, not the others. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so even the name on its own, it's uh, translated directly to say to elevate you know, the word kafita. So it's an integrated use activity. Its project's name is called integrated use activity, which is to mean that young people don't just need one thing. They just don't need family planning or they just don't need employment or they just don't need uh, to become an active citizen. Uh, one young person can need all these three all together at once. So the idea of the project, uh, uh, kafita, is to create a platform where young people can access all their needs at the same time. So the, the, uh, before the start of the project, an assessment and research were done to see what young people actually need in different sectors and areas. So we went into high school, uh, high, higher educational centers, TV uh, refugee camps, um, industrial parks, health centers, youth hubs. So in all around here, we found a lot of young people in order to assess their needs. So from that, we understood, the project understood that the need of young people is not just one. A, a young person who needs family planning also wants uh, to learn something about entrepreneurship, also wants to be an active citizen and wants to volunteer. So the project wants to integrate all this and create a platform to the um, young people for them to be the change makers, so for, him, for them to be to create a grassroots level change to, for themselves. This is not something new. It is. It, it's been there. The 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 new thing is the integration. You know, a lot of NGOs, international and both local, are work on young people. But if you uh, if you can analyze, it's just a, a project only works on a single thing. You know, a project comes and works on maybe in, uh, employment. Uh, another project comes and works on family planning. Uh, some other project come and work on making young people an active citizen. But here at Cafeta, um, A, the sample set and the group is large, you know, 17 cities, over 2 million young people. The numbers are higher. Also, over 2 million young people, many for this. To for be rich over the five years. In the next five years. Yes. Five years. Um, uh, and for then, the pro period of that project. Yes, so the integration is what is actually new about it. And the users are really responsible for their change. In the previous times, there were not users. Users were like... Uh, overseen by other elderly persons like but when you come to Kafita, the youth are responsible for their own change for their own lives and uh, basically they choose what they want to be and not that what's overloaded by the society on them well you can tap into your own experiences for example i mean again this is not something new right there have been various initi initiatives in the past where the young try to kind of address their own problems and mm. make the space for themselves in the wider 
in the wider political, social, or economic landscape. This is not something new. Um, yeah, again, uh, it is not new. the idea is not new, as, as I mentioned earlier. It's the integration part of it, the uh, the reach part of it, uh, how it plans to reach over uh, two million people. And also, um, there are something, there are uh, groups called coalitions under the Kafita, uh, if one of the coalitions, which I'm part of. It. So the idea of Kafita is... Uh, to be as diverse as possible, to reach as many diverse groups as possible and to be accommodative of all young people. So uh, as, a, as a rule, any cafeta involvement should uh, contain a 50% women and 6% dis- people with disabilities. So everyone should be included. When, it, when we say young people, it's just not the men or the women or just the disabled. It's all the all this to come together and become one. So... The integration and the, incl- the inclusivity is, I, I think, what makes Kafeta new. Or, you know? So in, in the course of the, 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 the two days, you, you talked about youth in- engagement in policy, creating access to finance. Uh, you talked about, you know, had a conversations about business technology, innovation, and, and also a number of other socio- psychosocial issues that young people in this country face. I mean, was it comprehensive enough for you, for example, when you went through all this? Uh... It was really comprehensive. Like, it was really fun. At the same time, it was really educated. For example, there was a skill labs. Like, users can, could really have trainings. There were different parts of the trainings. We had a skill lab component, like, behind the, behind the Millennium Hall. Mm-hmm. And there were, there were different holes that, like, for example, there were... Educa- I, I, for example, gave skill labs on family planning, so users can come and give full education about condom, be wise condomizing the other family planning methods, as well as short and uh, long ones. And there were CPRs, um, even SACO, there is a part, there is a, there's part in Kafta, there's part where it's SACO, and it gives financial support for users. And there were different training skills in the, in the as well as in, in the two days. Yeah, yeah, there were also trade fairs. Yeah, um, so SACO is saving and credit uh, system for young people. So the, from like I think Debrabran and other parts of regional cities, uh, there were young people who already took um, entrepreneurial trainings, already took. Uh, uh, loans from SACO and already started their own business. So there were trade fair s- centers for young people who have gone through this process to show uh, to showcase their own businesses. And so, so for newcomers to the festival, you know, to see uh, such a fruitful uh, ending uh, and fruitful uh, um, conclusion to this trainings, to see the trainings come to life in this way was such a, a very, you know, encouraging thing to even start uh, start and re- register in the SACO or even start to, to take the trainings. And so so this were very interesting. Let's tap into your personal experience. For example, you trained what? You, you trained as a software developer? Um, yeah. You're, uh, you're, by, you're a startup, right? Yes, by profession, I'm a software engineer and I have my own startup. So the I started my own startup before getting any kind of trainings. So the trainings in Cafeta came after I established my own company, but they came in handy. So I didn't have digital, I didn't have financial background. I didn't have this uh, enough entrepreneurial background. So the trainings I took, and after uh, uh, after I, I took them, I even started giving out the trainings uh, as well to others. So I took them in and to make my business and to make my company a be- better because I only had an engineering background and nothing else. So the trainings helped me in widening my scopes and having uh, experiences and having, even if it's short, having an experience in other fields of, you know, the market. and the experience. Have you found your place in, in the market, you think? It's uh, barely, it's what, a year and a half since yes, you've been in that business? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to see how the young are challenged by the, the larger landscape. Yeah, uh, oh. obviously you can't omit the fact that we are shadowed by the big companies and the big names and the network they have already created. So it's very hard for us to penetrate in, but there are, you know, there are uh, uh, companies that are willing enough to give us opportunities. For example, we have done this app called Abran, uh, which is 
about inclusivity and uh, converting the uh, and training manual into audiovisual and sign language uh, interpretation. So that project on its own was a big project, but uh, it was uh, funded and it was, the project was owned by a local NGO called DC, which is working with one, one of the implementers of Kafta and which is working on young people. So they gave us the benefit of the doubt because we're young and energetic and energetic, and they gave us the benefit of the doubt. And they proved themselves right? Yes, they did. The app is launched. The, the project was timely. Uh, we did enough research and you know, it was a success all in all. So uh, there are people who give you the benefit of the doubt and all you have to do is just work. Okay. And make it again. And, and you, uh, Dagmar, you, you're a trained midwife, right? Exactly. And you have an experience in back on background. I mean, you have this experience of working in industrial parks. Yeah. But it's it's interesting, is it not? I mean, talking to women. And, uh, I mean, ex explain to me what the the main challenges uh, young young women face in the work in the workplace. I mean, young women that you deal with. Uh, so they ch they like they face a lot of a lot of challenges in their work areas. They might have a gender-based violence. Uh, they may be What would come to mind when you talk about gender-based violence, you know, primarily? Primarily, the, like, I have experiences that, that came to my office saying that they had a violence, but they don't know who it is. They actually do. They actually do. But they have this frightening, of, like, the, the working environment might not be that safe for them, or they might not think that is safe. To, mm -hmm. to come out and go to the places. But during Kafta in, in our, they, we, we created a linkage office. There was no any health center in the IP. So we created a linkage office from the industry park to other health centers that are nearby to act as these different gender-based violences, in other unplanned pregnancies in the using family planning and as well. Do they come forward? Are they open in their in their dealings, in their conversations with you? Because you you happen to be a man, and it's very difficult, you know, to make that uh, yeah, but I think communication that swift. Young makes it better, you know. If it was someone older, someone with equal age as their moms, I think I, I, they won't be able to freely come and talk. The fact that he's young and is willing to, you know. But even that, you would have been better placed to handle this this thing. I mean, is uh, that is that a yeah, yeah, yeah. that does that construct appeal to you? Mm. Well, we do have other ladies in mm. my industry park, like in my in my corner. Uh, we, I have a, we we have Doctor Edith, which is a doctor, which mm. is a general practitioner. We have Rahil, which is which have a bachelor's degree in nursing, so that. Well, it gave us a variety of choices to wh whoever they can talk to. Like if they could, if they're comfortable with me or I, either Daradit or Rahil, mm. they could they could ever choose who they wanted to talk to. Again, I'd like to tap into your experiences. Uh, you, you as a as a young girl, as a young woman, you have jumped into a classically into what is classically a man's territory, right? Uh, I, I want you to build on that and tell me a little bit more on what the specific challenges and are and what, how you're going about about addressing them, about facing them, about surmounting. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So um, when when I come to my own experience, you know, whenever we go to client offices or you know, whenever we we go to we go there and talk about the projects, they automatically decide that. I am the either the you know the manager or the admin. I just do the administrative stuff, not the technical and the programming stuff. So, uh, uh, in the beginning, it used to bother me. You know, I am as technical as my other guy friends. So I should be you know they should be able to talk about talk with me about the project, not the uh, uh, the you know the administrative stuff. But later on. You know that's a unique. That's the a trait on its own, like a, a, a unique and good trait on its own. You know, that's how I end, even ended up in following and uh, learning my masters in pro project management. You know, as a woman, I am very organized. I'm structured. I have a, I have a, an inborn um, um, leading um, capability. So why be bothered by? what others say about me, why, why be bothered by their mistake? I can be a software engineer and a project manager together. So, you know, I just changed the, their um, their vision and their looks and then, um, you know, make it on my own. Do you feel that you're, you're facing the same challenges in your line of work? 
Do, 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 you, do you think you're taken seriously by the elders in the business? Uh, exactly, exactly. Like for me, my, 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 like my hair is short. Like for my other guy friends, like my male friends, who, like like you mentioned, there are like little lot of uh, I have friends like software engineers in the such as that. So when they go to different offices looking like that, to uh, as soon as they get they get like they came into the office. They will be judged with their first view, like with their hair, with their outlook, with their face. And but the use is more than that. They're capable of doing a lot of things. They're capable of like moving mountains and yeah. such things. So how do you prove I'm wrong? Yeah, like prove I'm wrong is like doing the actual job, like being there on time, like doing the actual work, like proving them wrong, being meeting deadlines and. Like, that's all about what's coming. It's all about delivery. Yeah, delivering on point. As young people in Ethiopia, what concerns you the most? What are you worried about? What is that you think is insurmountable, if you will? What do you think is inherently difficult for you guys to kind of face uh, as, as living and working as you guys do here in Ethiopia? What is, what is that worries you the most? Uh, for me, the first thing is peace. Uh, the one thing that bothers me the most here is peace, and I think this is concern for most people, most people in my, around my age group. Because um, now, the moment you become able to carry yourself and start living on your own, start you know going around see, seeing opportunities, uh, pe the peace becomes barrier. You know, you can't just uh, up and go and work and different regions where you can't st speak the native language or you can't. So it becomes a barrier for you to explore the opportunities there. There's a lot to be done in Ethiopia, but you can't actually go and feel free to work, to, you know, st uh, station there and work. It's been, it's, it was okay in previous years, but nowadays it's becoming danger. So for like, most people... So that's, 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 yeah. what he's saying, that's affected your business, for example. For, yes, for example, we, we, st we had projects and... Uh, re outside of Addis, we had projects there, but we c we didn't feel safe enough to go and settle there for two weeks or more because you know the peace is not stable. So most young people are even deciding to go abroad and leave the country and make themselves uh, useful and available elsewhere when they could, you know, generally be useful here and help their country grow. Do you want do you want to be useful here and make the the country grow? I'm struggling to. I just I, I never wanted to leave Ethiopia. Honestly, did not ever never occurred to me, but I can't say I feel the same w way these days. You know, I see opportunities and peaceful opportunities outside than here. Uh, I am still struggling to make it work here, but. Uh, as as, uh, as your question is, says, it's... Don't you see light at the end of the tunnel? I, 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 I do see that, especially if the vibrant youth, is go, you know, works together and pushes through. But uh, if you ask me what bothers you or what do you fear most, it's the peace. How, how about you, Dagmar? The same goes to me, like the, the peace and security. For instance, the use like, unemployment level is so high but for, for those to be high is one of the causes are peace and security. For instance, me and my friend that were born and raised here in Addis wanted to go and uh, work outside the, the, the city. But with the current peace and security situations, we'd rather be unemployed living in your city rather than go and uh, go and risk your life. And even you, your families will not allow you to go out there. So peace and security, actually it's integrated, the peace and the security. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as the uh, unemployment and financial stability for users is very yeah. demanding these days. So, what do you think should be done? You're not just complaining. You should yeah. be. You yeah. should be doing something uh, uh, about, about it. As young people, you're better positioned, better placed to do something about it, right? Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. Um, what What do yeah. you think? Are the, the the ways out of out of other not 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 just only the yeah, peace yeah, thing, yeah. but also other problems that you face. Yeah, so the first thing is uh, I feel like uh, the use should be incorporated in the policy making. They should be asked. Are you not? Because we're currently being considered. I've ne I, I think we're on the way uh, to, you know, on the way to be actually actively engaged in the policy making. Uh, 
I think um, the involvement is actually getting higher and higher. So uh, as the, uh, just make them make the young people uh, be involved and connected from the beginning. Don't just make the rules and drop on them and help, expect them to follow because the young people don't function like that. So make the rule make them feel like the rules were their own. They're, they made the rules, so it won't be hard for the government to enforce them because the the young people their own on their own would feel like the rules are their own so there won't be there wouldn't be any difficulties on following them so mm. i think the the root the roots uh, solution would be you know engaging them starting from the bottom interesting do you do you, do you share her her, her really ways like of that. challenging really the status quo per se yeah i really do share her like the policies like underlying policies should be inclusive of the youth like other than the policies the governments and other civic societies should in be inclusive during any discussions regarding employment, regarding peace and security, regarding politics. Like the youth needs to be integrated in those so that they can be part of the change. So, like there are uh, things uh, being done in terms of involving the youth in policy making yeah, in in yes, various but activities. But I don't think that's if, if like that made that made the change. Like the, but you're not saying that there are none. There no, are, no, 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 but not. they're not enough. They're not enough. Definitely not enough. So what specifically do you want to be uh, done along this line? Along this line, like being inclusiveness till the limit, like to the politics, to the peace integrity, to the unemployment rate, to the financial stability for the use, and everything that's happening in this country regarding the its instability comes from the use. Like working on the use would like really be peaceful and uh, fruitful to the country. So you're not just asking, you're also contributing, right? You're not just on the receiving end, yes. right? You're not just merely demanding, right? Yes, I think the idea of Kafuta as a project is to help the government in these sectors because the formation of coalitions. So we have coalitions in every region. And these coalitions are like the sample, they're like sample groups. They, they're, there are a lot of youth interest groups in our societies. We can't represent them all in one. You know, but we can take samples from each group and then make, they, we form the coalitions in a very democratic way. Mm -hmm. Um, so these coalitions are representative of the general use under them. Mm -hmm. So, and in, in this two days festival, we were able to form a national coalition, uh, one from every, one or more from every city. So there is a national level of coal use coalition. So for the government to make the young people involved in the policy, the, the government doesn't have to go door to door to use hubs and ask them what do you want in the policies. So this, the national level use coalition is supposed to represent the young. That would be screening all the yes. deeds and so demands. Yeah. The cafeteria is making it, making it easy for the government to access all, all young people because you know the national coalition is a representative of all young people. So the government only has to go there and ask them to be part of the policy. So, so are you hopeful? Because you'll be around for the next five years. Yes, very. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It was really a pleasure to have this conversation with you, young people of this country with their hopes and frustrations. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much.